man. What kind of Christmas story is this? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and through Him everything came into being. I mean, really, where are the shepherds? And where is the wise men? And where are the animals? And where is the manger? And John seems to doesn't even know what the mother of our Lord's name is, or who the father is. There's no mention of Mary. There's no mention of Joseph. There's no shepherds. There's no animals. There's no wise men. There's no, in the beginning was the word. What kind of Christmas story is this? There's very little in John concerning what we see as a traditional understanding of what the Christmas story is. But I want to think that this is probably the best Christmas story that anyone could ever read. Because there's so much more to this season. There's so much more to Christmas than a baby in a manger. In fact, by now, not for most of us, because we just got up this morning, but soon that baby is going to go back into the closet where it was and stay there for 12 more months until next year. Even though Christmas just started today, right? Lesson for you this morning. If you didn't know, the 12 days of Christmas start when? And end when? 12 days from now, thank you. January 5th, (laughs) right. The season of Christmas is 12 days long and it starts on Christmas Day and ends on January 5th. So now is the time to sing all of our Christmas songs and we won't hear another one till next year. Think about that for a moment and think how we could live our lives out loud as Christians right now in a world that wants to be done with this day when it's a celebration for a season and a celebration for really a lifetime. Because you see, this reading from the Gospel of John is all about the almighty, all-powerful God who created everything that exists and is far beyond our simple understandings and our simple comprehensions. Because it tells us in John that the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this Word came to be And came here to live among us. He came to earth. God came to us as a human being in flesh. And this is God's love to us in physical action. God did not stay separated from us, but came into the world. Everything that was here before him, he created. Yet he chose to take on our faith, our lot, our flesh. And become one of us to know what it is to be us and to teach us how to live. God became human flesh. God's love in action, as it says in later in John chapter three, verse 16. John three sixteen is. He gave his only begotten son. Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And even more important, does anybody know what John 3.17 is? For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Right? Jesus came at one point in time, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. He gave His Son to us to come to us in the flesh at Christmas, And the point in time that we can see God's love made manifest is on Good Friday when Jesus hung on the cross. Because you see, this season, this day, is more about the pageantry of, of a baby in a manger. And us seeing this each year as our children represent these scenes to us. It's more than just that pageantry. Christmas is the concrete demonstration of just how much God loves each and every one of us. A concrete expression of His love for you and for me when God took on our form and became one of us. And dwelt with us. That word in the 14th verse of the first 
chapter of the Gospel of John, the Word became flesh and He dwelt with us. Actually, the Word is tented. It's the same word that Peter uses on the mountaintop when he goes up with Jesus and Jesus sees Elijah and Moses. Lord, shall we build three tabernacles? Shall we build three tents? Jesus came and tented with us. It doesn't mean that he's only right here. It doesn't mean that he's only someplace else. But Jesus came to tent with you, which means that he's mobile and he's ready to go wherever you're going to go. And he's going to be with you wherever you're going to be. Because it's not just about a baby in a manger. It's about God's concrete love coming to us and living with us and dwelling with us and being a part of our lives each and every moment. It's about more than just a baby in a manger. Because Jesus is not part of the Christmas story. The Christmas is part of Jesus' story. Say that again. Jesus is not a part of the Christmas story. But Christmas is a part of Jesus' story. And that story continues with Him dwelling with you. Because you see, the birth of Jesus is just merely a step in this story of God coming to dwell with each and every one of us to give us a life beyond all imagination. A life where we can walk through the sorrows and we can bound through the joys and we can live our lives out loud because we know that no matter what happens, that that baby in a manger is always going to be walking with us and giving us the support. Because Christmas is not just about the baby. We're going to hear Scott sing here in just a second. But I want to read the last um, portion of the verses from the song that Scott's going to sing for us. Um, it's a, Christmas is not just about the baby in the manger. It's not about Mary and Joseph. It's not about the angels and the shepherds or the animals or the wise men. It's about Jesus coming and dwelling with us. It's about God made flesh living among us. And it's about the cross. It's about our sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about God's love nailed to a tree. It's about how every drop of blood that flowed from Him when it should have been me. It's about the stone that was rolled away. So that you and I can have real life today.